every single jump I can think of on Fissure along with movement techniques you can apply to any map in the game. That's what I'll be covering in today's video. And of course, if you don't already, make sure to follow me on Twitch. I've linked that in the description below. All of these full map breakdowns are done live on Twitch and then uploaded to YouTube at a later date. The more people that can join me for the live discussion, the more fun it is to break it all down. So I hope I can see you there. And that said, this Saturday, July 11th at 6 p.m. Eastern, I'll be breaking down two maps back to back refuge and regret so we've got a lot to get through and remember if you like this content and you want to see more make sure to like and subscribe and enjoy the rest of the video welcome guys to our next map breakdown we are now on fissure of course the forge maps don't have quite as many jumps as the other maps so i think this should be a nice quick run through it's also symmetrical as well so whatever we see on this side i believe is 100 percent the same i don't think there's any jumps that are exclusive to one side or the other and if there are that's why i've got you guys in the comments so anybody who's here who's live if there's if there's a jump that i'm not aware of that that you want to let me know about just let me know in the comments sound off in the comments get your your clips ready xbox clips feel free to send me whatever you like uh, and of course, if you're watching on YouTube, if you spot something that I miss or you want to add to the discussion, you can do so on YouTube as well. I would appreciate that. So we're going to get into this. I'm, I will talk about starting strats uh, as much as I can, but there's only one starting strat that I do on this map. Uh, and, and I think it's pretty great. I do it all the time. The same thing every single time I play this, this map. Uh, what's good, Mysterion? Welcome. Uh, so what I do is, because the only real focal point, if you're playing competitive on this map, like Arena, is the, uh, the OS in bottom mid, right? There's no spank or rocket launcher. This is the Slayer settings, I assume. Uh, so maybe it's a little different if you're playing it on Slayer. But I just play for OS. That's all I really do. And what I do is I sprint jump thrust off spawn, re-sprint. And while I'm re-sprinting, I'm waiting for the thrust to come back. The beauty of, of burning that first thrust nice and early is the second thrust comes back by about here. And I'm on a special game type, so you can't see the thrust recharge. I can just spam it. But the second thrust comes back by about here. Uh, so what I do, I get rid of the first thrust, sprint jump thrust, and then sprint, and then jump with sprint maintain forward, turn, thrust, slide, grab. Like that. Every time. I do that every time, and what, what ends up happening is I either get there first, and burn it, or I get there first and I grab it. And I always get there first. <laughs> like, I kid you not. I will get there first every time. Just doing that. It's it's not that tough. Sprint, jump, thrust, reactivate, sprint. You jump, turn, thrust, sprint, slide. I sprint, slide if I have the timing to, just to try to avoid the potential of somebody shooting me one more time as I come in and grab it and then turn and get away and prepare to punch people because everybody's going to fly in here. They're going to throw nades in here. Just start mailing. Watch your back, right? Because there's two ways. There's two ways that people go for the, the opening strats on this map. They will go either you can thrust slide like that and cut the corner and land right into here and, and just cut off anybody who spawns on blue and try to grab them snag them as they're going for the os you can of course toss nades in advance you can maybe do like a bank nade off that thing as you fall down uh the other way is of course to cut across like straight across like i did or you go down through here you go for the low door right so it just ends up being a total cluster f in uh in the bottom of the map if you can get os quickly and put it on then you can just start taking you know taking faces uh get a couple early kills uh won't get there first now that you've told us maybe not it beat me there i challenge you do the exact same strat there's a couple things i was thinking is you could also technically like jump thrust launch like that i you just want to make sure that you have a second thrust and you have full sprint speed so that you could do the connection jump after so i was thinking maybe you could jump like sprint jump thrust hold jump for like a launch to get that that like extra launch forward and then re-sprint but you still have to sprint long enough to hit full sprint speed right so that can kind of affect it that's that's why i just go for a generic jump thrust like i don't care too much where that thrust goes just so i can make sure i've got the sprint but technically i think you could do something like that maybe if you don't lose too much speed be able to do it in a fast way just so you have your sprint at full speed when you come down you turn and thrust right I think a really good tip for Fissure is if you see it in matchmaking, hit the select button. Okay, perfect. You're right. Hit start, go to leave game, and leave. That's probably the, the best strat for this map. I think you will succeed every time. Facts. 
<laughs> okay, so that's that's all I really do as a starting strat. I just I specifically go for OS because that's the most important part of the map there. Of course, there's the ball as well. Everything else would be like set up to deny the OS, to deny a ball grab, to maybe grab like a tack mag or something, but I'm not too invested uh, in all the different starting strats. If you guys have something really cool that you want to show, feel free, but I just go, I beeline for that OS and it works for me. Uh, so as far as jumps, we'll start with the bases uh, around here. So there aren't any crazy jumps that I know of, but I will try to be as thorough as possible. Of course, this here is a crouch jump, right? You can skip this without a clamber, nice and easy. This right here, you can't crouch jump up to, but there's a variety of ways to get here. You can stabilize it, you can sprint stabilize it, right? You can, or whatever, you can super jump, right? You can thrust slide jump. So many ways. Oh my god. This is something you gotta worry about in Forge as well, is notice how I thrust it and I bounced off like nothing. The floor is uneven. And it's hard to spot the areas where the floor is uneven, and I have a warning about this later. But just, I don't even know what to say about this one, but just try to be aware of areas that where there might be a groove or something kind of sticking out of the floor. It'll mess up your thrust slide uh, and cause you to fly up in the air, which is not always what you want. So something to be aware of. Super jump, you can spring jump it, which is useful as well in other areas, but just something to know, right? So you can get up there, you can crouch jump, you can spring jump. Pretty basic, uh, not too much I worry about with these things. This is like super specific, but I was thinking maybe you can like bounce your head, spring jump or something, just so you can land earlier and, and kind of connect your movement more seamlessly, but not really that necessary. Uh, this ramp here, you can slide up it and spring jump off of it. Also not super useful. We're getting to hyper specific stuff, but you know, this is, this is you know, Shyway's YouTube channel. So I, I'd love to, Talk about slides on ramps. You can connect, like, so you can technically connect a slide on the top of a ramp into a spring thrust and then grab that if you want to. Not the most useful, but like I said, guys, you slide on the top of a ramp, feet barely leave the floor or briefly leave the floor. You can spring jump immediately after. You can slide down the other side of the ramp to launch yourself into the wall, I guess. There's nothing back here, unfortunately. Sliding down this, this ramp specifically is not very useful, but if you slide in the sweet spot, you get a launch forward. Maybe if you're just trying to do a fast challenge, you know somebody's gonna be in the hall there. So you just take advantage of that little bit of extra movement speed. If you get a good slide, just to you know kind of land over here, maybe you could jump backwards from there, put yourself in a good position, something like that, right? Of course, this is crouch jump height. Just a, a couple crouch jumps will get you up there. Speaking of ramp slides, more of this fancy tech, what you can do is you can slide up this one and get an immediate spring jump up this one as well like that to connect to carbine. What I think is kind of cooler, and this is if you have really good movement and you're consistent doing a technique like this, is you can slide, spring jump, and land specifically on that ledge out of an aggressive challenge. Like that, and land on the wall out of an aggressive challenge and then jump backwards into carbine while you're shooting somebody at the same time, which is some pretty crazy stuff, but, uh, but you can do it. We're thorough here. Subscribe. Hit subscribe, Mysterion. What are you guys doing? <laughs> uh, Perifida, welcome. Anyone watching this on YouTube, subscribe right now. Thank you. I okay, so yeah, you can slide up it. You can slide down all these ramps, just for whatever reason. What This one's actually kind of cool. So something I've been working on is you can slide up this one, spring thrust, and catch the ledge above. Like, slide, spring thrust. We're gonna do it until we get it, guys. Slide like that, and then you still have to hit the stabilize, which I'm not hitting here, like that. And you can do it way faster. You can connect it in one quick movement. So technically speaking, you could be like in a battle with somebody who might expect you to be, just to get to this location slower, uh, and you can get right in his face really quickly. Super risky though. But it's a cool connection. It's hard to find locations where sliding into a spring jump actually makes sense. It could be used effectively. This map blows. Thank you for your contribution. I appreciate that. <laughs> these ramps can be slid down as well. So all of these things are technically little launch pads. It's something to consider. Even this little lip right here is actually useful. Like timing a good slide on that can send you forward faster. You can get a little launch off of it and that could be useful. You never know, just to get that little boost of speed to get somewhere faster, just always be aware that all these ramps have sweet spots. They're somewhere around the top. You time a slide, you're gonna hit it. You can even fall on them as well. So you can fall like that and time a slide and launch yourself forward to carbine on the lower portion of the ramp also. So all of that stuff 
is is possible. You know, there's potential there if you want to if you want to do that. Something else I notice is you can jump on all of these things. I don't know, like when you would find a good scenario to jump or stand on these things, but you can stand on them, right? And it's actually not very convenient to stand on. There you go. You can stand on it. I don't know what this looks like from a player POV. So if somebody's coming up from the back of the base, I assume they see my feet, right? Like this is something I haven't tested and I would have to test, but I, I don't think this is as sneaky as I, I want it to be, but you can sit here if you want. Use cam. I can't, I don't have that. You know what, I, I should turn on machinima mode so I can pull out the third person and then uh, and then do it that way. That would have been cool, but I don't have that. Something maybe you guys can check in your own time, but technically speaking, what you could do is you could like slide jump to it and like jump back and forth between the two areas, like some nutcase, like as a challenge on somebody below, just to mess with his head. If you have really good movement, just kind of connect a wall jump and then like thrust back over shooting at the same time, right? <laughs> Pretty wild stuff. Uh, all of these can be stood on. There's a creative way to stand on all of these. Even though it's not super useful to stand on all of them, I just figured out that you can do that. You can thrust on the wall, and uh, so you just sprint thrust at the wall and then land on it. And it's pretty hard to position. Of course, you can't clamber it because it's such a small ledge. But you can do this. Uh, and maybe that's tricky. If you have amazing movement and you thrust and you land on it, you sit there, who knows? Maybe you can make a play. It, it's uh, it's reaching, though. This is definitely reaching, because who's going to spend time sprint thrusting into walls just so they can stand on this stupid little edge? Uh, but you can do it. We're thorough here, right? Uh, you can jump, like, hold crouch thrust into this one, which is pretty easy. You can... Do the same thing, whole crouch thrust into this one, right? Just stand on these. Once again, I don't know how much coverage I'm getting for doing this, but you never know. It's hard to, like, you, you would think you might just be able to crouch jump land on it, but for some reason, this these ones are tough to just crouch jump into, unless I, I have to have, like, some laser precision. I, so you can do it, right? Okay, actually, it's not too terrible. So technically speaking, you can get, like, pretty good at jumping off that, but so many, there's so few, sorry, scenarios where, where you're going to try to make a play in Carbine by jumping off of that, so not super useful. Uh, same with these, though, right? Like you just take the slant, you, you thrust off the wall, launch up. It's the same process for all of these. This one's kind of cool. I think if you found good timing for this one, like maybe you could stand up there and hide there as somebody walks back, but... Once again, spending time thrusting at walls, I think, I think is wasted time that should be spent going for the ball, going for a slay, whatever it is. There's a bug on my shirt. There is no bug on my shirt. I don't know what you're looking at. Why are you looking at my shirt? You should be looking at the gameplay, Masadi. What are you trying to do? <laughs> uh, these right here, you can slide on. There's a crumb in your beard. Okay, stop. You guys are gonna make me self-conscious. All right, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to do, guys? So you can time a slide and launch down here, and what I was thinking is connecting this into a stabilize, you could get up on the wall. Just for the record, this wall can be stood on with a spring jump, with a stabilized jump, right? You can stand up here. The cool thing about standing up on this wall is if you're hugged, like you're crouched in the corner, people can't see you here. So somebody's gonna fly through basement, you could definitely make a play off of this wall. So if you have good movement and you connect a ramp slide, and then hit a stabilize, you can instantly connect with the wall. Like something like that, right? Which could be kind of cool. I, I don't know, if you hit like a really nice sweet spot slide and connect it into a smooth stabilize, into the wall, uh, you can get there so fast that somebody might not necessarily expect you to be there or you know, you get reticle advantage, whatever it is, and you don't burn your thrust if you hit a, hit a good slide. If there was a spider, he would be dead by now. Or Spider-Man, one or the other. Thank you, Mysterion. At least somebody compliments me in the chat. <laughs> um, okay. So all that. All that stuff. Bunch of slides. Honestly, this whole area is just a bunch of slides. This is a bunch of ramps. And 
uh, there aren't really many jumps. As you can see, everything's kind of just flat surface. This right here, you can get in this wall. You can just, I, what I do is I hold crouch and jump from a bit of a distance and just kind of land in it. You can shimmy, hold the ball here. Not super useful, a little bit more high ground maybe, which means that that might give you a, you know, a, a reactionary advantage or a reticle advantage in a fight. You jump off it or something, but nothing crazy there as well. Uh, the lift though, something cool about the lift that I, I would recommend. Zane with the host, thank you buddy, I appreciate it. What's up, uh, OPG, how are you doing? Okay, so on the lift here, something that'll happen is of course, you're gonna challenge people from this lift, right? There are scenarios where you come from under the lift, there are people up on top of the base, you're expecting to get into a fight immediately. What ends up happening is when you come up in the lift, they shoot you for free. So you thrust back to stay alive and then you get hit into the lift again and then you just come up and die because you're stuck in the lift. What you can do is in the instance that you challenge and you thrust back, stabilize. Okay, I did that too early. Thrust back, stabilize, and mash crouch, and you can get yourself out of the lift and avoid it. So you don't have to worry about coming right back up against your will. So just stabilize, mash crouch, get out of it, and then you're good. You, you can save like your thrust, you can come back, sorry, with the thrust once again, avoid nades, and you don't get stuck into a second challenge where you will die. So really something to be thinking about. If you're forced to thrust back in, stabilize, mash crouch, get out of the lift so you can you know choose whether or not you wanna go back up later. The rest of this base here. So you can, this is a low door, uh, really simple, but something that I do is I'll slide to, to have a lower height in my jump, right? You, you lower your peak height of your jump so you can get through the window cleanly. You can, you know, jump to it a variety of ways. You can clamber it maybe really quickly. I wouldn't really recommend it, but you're basically just, you know, sliding through it to get through it conveniently. I will sometimes jump to it and drop back on it. It's dangerous but you can fake people out on this ledge in some instances, especially in the corner here, when you're fighting somebody and you back down and then reclamber, they don't have an immediate angle, so they don't necessarily expect you to do it. So something to just think about that you might be able to, to make a little play with one, don't do too many of them, just one little drop back is good. Uh, this whole area, spring jump height, stabilized jump height as well, right? So normally you can't get up here, can't get up here with a crouch jump, you can, do a nice stabilize to get up there immediately. You can sprint stabilize, right? You can super jump it. Uh, but spring jumping is really useful because it doesn't put you on, like all this stuff puts you on the radar. It makes noise. It's very obvious, right? As to how you're getting up here. But spring jumping is not obvious. You can make some pretty sick plays just landing, spring jumping back up. Something I've done before is I was in a fight with somebody, he was below. I dropped down, landed in crouch, and then spring jump back up to confuse him in a fight. And I like, I made this big play basically, but you just know that you can do that. So if you land here, try to hold crouch, land on the floor and crouch so you can spring jump right back up. Something to think about when you're coming through the door, just kind of wrapping around with your movement as well. Or of course you can do a stabilize if you have the freedom to do so, you're not worried about somebody just preying on you the moment you get up there. That's a double. And that's a triple. You don't even play H5 much, but you're still here, Sprite. That uh, that speaks to me. Thank you, man. Thank you for still being here. Uh, as far as anything else here, it's good to know that this is spring jump height as well. Just in case you need to spring jump, you want to get directly up without worrying about any other area. You can technically use that to bounce your head, roof bounce you. So you can do a spring jump faster. So like just taking creative advantage of your environment to hit uh, you know a variety of jumps. Get places more quickly, right? There's tack mag here. Not too much as far as jumps. Just pretty good place to take fights from. You could be pretty tricky, of course, jumping around here. A lot you could do. But uh, no real jumps or anything fancy in this area. Like, you can't get up here, to my knowledge. This is where the uh, the real, I want to say nerds, but the, the experts, the real experts got to tell me about stuff that I don't know. But I don't think you can get up in there. You can't get up on top of this, right? Uh, you got this area here. Of course, something cool about this area is you can thrust and get around here, right? You can go both ways. A little bit harder to go this way. I'm, I would die if I didn't have a second thrust right there. But you can go both ways pretty confidently. Stabilize helps as well, right? Something you can also do is just skip it all altogether and go directly to the bridge. So if you don't want to wrap directly around, you could just do like a nice confident jump thrust out. Of course, you're making yourself very vulnerable, but just skip a significant portion of the map and get out of there at the same time. That's an option you have also. Uh, something I will do on this ledge, this is another ledge where I would say the drop back is useful, right? 
Because in a situation like this where you, if you're forced to wrap because you're under pressure, you do this, you jump around, your opponents know that you went here. They know that you went there because that's basically your only option. So they're expecting you to be there. So that is why it's another good scenario for a drop back because they'll pre-nade the area, start throwing nades, they'll try to challenge you. You want to get your thrust back, you can do this a little bit in the corner, maybe one or two times or something to give you more time for the thrust, to be annoying in a fight, to make them think that you left, the angle, whatever it is, just another environment where you can do that really quickly, uh, efficiently. Uh, pretty useful to fake jumping to the other side and thrust back where you started. That's interesting too, right? I, I guess you could even do like a little stabilize too, and then thrust back where you started. So you can kind of, you know, finesse in this area. Dangerous though, right? Because any false move and you're, you're right off the map, you're dead. Uh, Something else in this area as far as just movement efficiency that I think is really cool is low clambering, right? I've talked about this several times that uh, the clamber, good thing about the clamber is it allows you to clamber super low ledges out of a slide immediately. So you can sprint, slide, and you basically double tap clamber or you tap and hold instantly and you'll clamber this ledge and it saves time uh, navigating around here. So you can like slide, double clamber like that and then connect it into a jump. I don't know why I'm making this look tough because it's pretty brainless. There you go. And crouch jump. And just kind of skip, uh, save timing and get to this angle like really quickly and efficiently. It's just one little, little nuance that I thought was really cool. You want to make sure if you want to hit these low clambers, slide until you feel your body connect with the surface like that. Instead of jumping before you make contact with it, that ensures that you can hit that fast, low, like frame perfect clamber and immediately get up to this ledge. It's a nice little cut your corners kind of route out of a slide, right? Pretty cool. I think it's cool. Sean, what up, dude? How's it going? As far as jumps in this area, you've got this little ledge. This is like your classic. This would be your classic Halo skill jump right here. You know, they always have one of these like little extra ledges. You can crouch jump it. Do two crouch jumps if you like. If you're, if you're jumping off that arm, you can just sprint, slide, clamber it, crouch jump afterwards. Pretty straightforward. Off of these railings, uh, I was thinking, can you get up here, right, directly? And I've tried, I've tried super jumping, I've tried spring thrusting. You get so close, but I don't think you can reach it unless you got, the sun's like right in my eyes, dude. <laughs> unless you've got like amazing movement, frame perfect movement, I, I don't think you can reach that. But what you can do, if you find yourself on one of these shoulders, is you can spring thrust off the shoulder and then stabilize up. And, uh, yeah, something like that, to like really quickly make a connection up top, potentially. I don't think I've, we've ever seen those trees or sun. I know, dude, there's so much sun. Let's go to the uh, the dark side of the map right here, right? There's no, nothing in the way here. Same shit, right? Uh, but yeah, like that. Spring thrust, stabilize, you can catch it. I don't think you're going to find too many scenarios to do this. What is cooler 
uh, and more useful is manipulating the lift. So I hit this by accident a little while ago and I realized you can manipulate how far you lift off of this thing consistently as well. And it's, it's tough to do, you have to have good timing, but of course, most of the time when you lift off this, you fly in the air, right? And you land on the opposite plat, which can be useful, maybe that's your objective. Uh, but sometimes you don't wanna go to the plat. Sometimes your objective is to go to the door. So a lot of people will do that. They'll, they'll fly up in the air, they'll thrust over the door, they spend a ton of time in the air, they have no thrust, they get shot for free by some guy on the plat, and they die like instantly, right? Uh, but you could actually manipulate how far you go in the lift. And one way to do it is to sprint thrust before you make contact with it. Like that. And then die this oh, way too. This is part of the risk here. So you have to have good timing <laughs> uh, to hit it perfectly. But this the, the only scenario where I think this would be really good is immediately after grabbing OS. And then you thrust. And you can even connect it to a clamber like I just did. And I'm right in the doorway. I don't waste time. I shave off seconds there. I can be aggressive immediately. But you're just thrusting right before you make contact with the lift. And the earlier you do that thrust, the less of your thrust that's, that's I guess, intercepting with the lift, the, uh, the better, I think. So if you do like a nice early thrust, you don't launch quite as far. But if you do a early thrust, that's like the instant you make contact, like something like that. Maybe not that. It's hard, to, you gotta kind of mess with it yourself and see what the exact timing is, but it's possible to get sent a little bit too far, like I did earlier, and kind of end up landing around here, where you can still clamber and live, but of course you don't want to end up dying the other way. Um, Shotzi could reach what if he wanted to? What if Shy is Shotzi's coach? If only. I, I would be banking right now. Shotzi's like the king of COD right now. Pinpoint, what up, what up? Uh, the other stuff you can do though is even if you thrust, so sprinting, thrusting into it beforehand will let you do like a short lift. You can also like thrust instantly after, which you burn your thrust later, and uh, so you get it back later, right? So I'd say it's better to burn it earlier if you can. But this technically works too. If you do a really early thrust, you can still kind of bump yourself off the wall, get directly to the door. So little ways to just kind of manipulate where you go with the lift. What's also cool about this is you can do it the other way too. Um, and there's some risk associated, as you can see. I don't want to fly out to the center of the map. There, like that. So from the lift, if you hit a nice early thrust, you've got to have tight timing. You can clamber this immediately. Uh, could it be useful, potentially? Something to know, right? Kind of neat. Just manipulating how you fly off that lift so you can put yourself in a better spot in the map. Uh, you can get places quicker. But yeah, that. As far as bottom mid... There's not really any jumps here, right? It's just the pedestal, you got the OS. One thing that I do, and it's kind of hard to do this because this ramp is so steep, but this is a downward ramp, right? So you can slide off of this, you can launch yourself forward. The thing about this ramp is it's so steep that if you sprint straight and slide, you won't really launch because it's like slightly too steep. So you kind of have to turn your body sideways and then hit a perfectly timed slide. So it's really tough to do this. But if you do it right, you actually launch all the way to the doorway. And if you can like grab OS and do this in one smooth sequence, it's just something I try to go for. Because if I don't get it, well, I still have OS. I don't really, you know, it doesn't really hurt me. Beat the pre-nades. Oh, I kind of got a bit of a slide there. That's it, right? Uh, I kind of hit the wall, but that little slide honestly is huge. If you can hit that consistently, just right after you grab an OS, and I don't know why it's it's so weird and finicky, but like something to try. Cause it's a nice little boost. It gets you right into the door. That's that honestly covers a like a vast vast majority of what's on the map. The uh, as far as like really cool skill jumps, there's one really cool one that I know, and uh, it's to get up into this small door from the bottom of the lift. Uh, what you have to do is you have to thrust, slide, jump, and clamber oh. on a ledge. There's an invisible clamber ledge on the wall. And I'll grab it. The emphasis lift jump. What's the emphasis lift jump? There. See there, right? So you can do that quicker. You have to pinpoint the clamber ledge though. So it's like, it's a tiny ledge and its location is like around there. So you have to thrust slide specifically to that spot. And if you stabilize to hit it, you can't stabilize again. So you have to have like really good timing Damn it. Imagine ground pound was in this map. 
I'm sure if you play it on Slayer, you get Ground Pound, you can do some ridiculous stuff uh, on Treehouse. But, of course, in competitive, you don't have that. But it's just crazy, like, how much more you can get out of map navigation. Like that, right? So that's honestly really slick. I think there could be a use for that. It's very risky. You could die. You could do it on both sides of the map. Um, but if you hit it, you avoid the lift. You get a whole alternative route. You save time progressing on the map. Right? Kind of neat. Emphasis? You're trying to say infamous. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm leaving. Bye. <laughs> the infamous. infamous. Oh my god. Alright, well, you know. Every, everybody's learned something today, I guess. We all learn a little bit. Whether it's Halo 5 jumps or grammar. Do you have to crouch to hit that clamber? Yeah, I, I hold crouch on every single jump unless I specifically am not supposed to, right? Like, every jump I'm holding crouch by default, it always helps ensure that you hit your jumps more consistently. It's kind of sad to say, but what else could there be covered, like, in this map that I didn't already touch on? <laughs> as fast as that was, that was honestly, like, that had to be, like, 15 minutes of me jumping around on this map. Kneecap off the slanted walls. In Treehouse Door for... Yeah, see, I, I thought about that too, right? Like, you can thrust kneecap off these walls and get, like, a bit of a launch. But the center of the map is so dangerous. You, you don't want to spend much time here. You don't want to do too many crazy, fancy launches here. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, you, maybe you could do that. Slide, clamber this. You could do, like, an immediate low clamber on this, right? Instead of going for the lift. And then maybe connect that. I don't know why I'm struggling to hit these ones. Like that, into a crouch jump, into another crouch jump. Just ways to like shave off a couple seconds in your movement, right? Jump, clamber, you can crouch jump to this. You can walk up these, right? They're slanted just enough that you can walk up them. So maybe you can like reticle place. You gotta have pretty good movement control. But yeah, jumps wise, it's a pretty basic map. Yeah, lights, if you know anything crazy, feel free to let me know. This is uh, kind of the infamous... This is one of the longest range battles, I think, that you get to experience on a, on a competitive map, right? Like, this distance. This is all left stick. Like, 90% left stick, and then you could do, like, slight adjustments with the right stick. But it's mostly left stick, especially with this Magnum. This is a good reason why you want to grab the DMR or the TAC mag, right? Either, either in basement or on the... Uh, what is it? Where the TAC mag spawns. Uh, TAC mag spawns. I just call that area TAC mag, but you grab it and then use it here. It's so much more effective. So much better. Well, I think we covered everything. And God, I feel like there's got to be like some crazy fancy jump is going to blow your minds, but I really just don't think there is. Alright, good talk. I can probably trim that into like 15 minutes, to be honest. That was quick.